today's my topic is uh, on uh, non vegetarian food and natural disasters so basically food is very important and if you all remember uh, my voice is clear i am audible yes yeah, okay. your voice is clear. Just uh... okay. So, see, I had told you about when I was discussing about pran and uh, paryapti. So, ahar paryapti, I told that is the one fundamental basic <clears throat> property and characteristics for all lives. So, based on ahar paryapti, that is food diet, the whole process begins and all other paryaptis also we achieve only after that as a result of food. So what has been told since the past that in earlier time, when we say the first ara, that is Sukma Sukma, so everything was green. Our whole planet was beautiful. It was green. However, it has been mentioned that people were eating the, or getting the food from the trees. It means, it means there were no animals, no birds, no other kinds of lives. They were there. I think uh, there is a lot of noise uh, from other participants. Can you turn off their... Uh, voice or something hello hello can you hear me marasab can you yes. hear me yes we are hearing it is uh, the voice is clear my voice is clear but i am getting noise from your side oh. somebody is making noise okay just uh, i am uh, muting all people except me yeah, no, you would also be muted, but I will open. <clears throat> uh, so just uh, you can unmute and uh, you can show your first uh, slide from starting and can you start again. Okay. Okay. Today, my topic is uh, on a very important subject. It is uh, related to our food. And I am going to talk today non vegetarian food and natural disasters. <clears throat> I had described earlier in my one of the lectures a pran and paryapti. And under that paryapti, I had discussed about the ahar paryapti. And ahar paryapti is very important because after getting that paryapti, the other paryaptis also evolve in the body organs. It has also been told that during this time cycle, Kal Chakra, in the first ara, the whole planet, Earth was very, very beautiful. It was green. And people were getting food from the trees, fruits, and other kinds of leaves necessary for them. Now, as a function of time, those whole, I mean, the trees slowly, slowly, as I told in the last lecture, how it decayed. Now the question arises whether in that earlier time, maybe around three to four lakhs of years, whether there were only human beings or other animals were also there. Birds were there or not? Other insects and reptiles were there or not. Mammals were there. If they were all were there, then human being was so innocent that he was not eating non-vegetarian food. That is, he was not killing the animals or birds and he was eating only and only fruits from the trees. As we know that the food is basically not only for our good health, but it gives us that is type of food 
gives us lot of other things also for example <clears throat> it puts forward that what kind of culture we have the food diet also gives an indication about our socio economic structure our entertainment our well <clears throat> wishing or a well doing well being health prospects etc but there is a old verb there is a old verse in india jaisa khaoge an waisa banega man means if you are at eating a good quality vegetarian food means your mental state also goes really vegetarian and for the good cause it has been widely spread not in our country but in many other countries also that non vegetarian food if we eat then it also creates many problems including our society economy structure culture our health and in our language also so dear participants of this lecture series my today's talk is slightly based on much more research work and you all i hope humbly appreciate when i will give some results at the end how in the beginning i ask questions for my investigations whether this whole global meat industry whether it was really necessary and if it was necessary then whether it was investigated that what kind of its impacts will be there on the society on the our biodiversity or as a whole on our environment so i have investigated few such questions that what kind of actually impacts of this meat industries are there at the same time we also explore whether that this non vegetarian food impacts the other kinds of our natural system say our biological <coughs> systems our climate systems our natural disaster systems so what is basically then i ask question if at all it impacts then what kind of mechanism what is the physical process which impacts that is this non vegetarian food impacts in general our environment and particularly other disasters so i am going to describe this i will first start with the non vegetarian diet history so when this non vegetarian food actually started in this world so actually food is non vegetarian food started also with the evolution or the as a function of time the history of the human being this is the earlier period i told that the first human being which was not intelligent not even in a full structure of human kind of thing or in a some kind of early monkey form and somehow at around 5.8 million year the lucy the girl she was detected her fossil was detected in the ethiopia and i myself also have seen her fossil structure in the university of addis ababa <clears throat> so earlier human which we call as a humanis the earlier form of about the 3 lakhs of year or so i'm sorry 3 point about 3 million years or so so what actually experts suggest that human ancestors began is eating meat around 2.6 millions of years 26 lakhs of years ago means still that is the time when the talent was not there and we were not have start learned how to stand up on our feet and so the brain system was not enough developed 
So based on the many other things that teeth, etc., of the our ancestors, the fossils which we found, etc., it was found that and it was suggested that were most likely they were scavenging in the early time. They were searching only whatever the dead body of any animal or bird or any other insect, so it is available, along with the fruit, mostly with the vegetable time things, they were eating. They were not knowing how to cook the food at all at that time. Okay, They were not knowing anything around that time. Our modern actually brains require a lot of energy. That is what we say. And now, if we say that a lot of energy is required, then somehow that ancient, our ancestors, started to feel that this energy is coming up. They are getting from that whatever the non-vegetarian food they are taking inside. So intake was partly vegetarian, partly non-vegetarian. But somehow, about three lakhs of years, not too old. Okay? So you can say that something started around eight lakhs of years back and then around 3,000, three lakhs of years. Now I would like to remind you in my one of the talks when I was giving about the time cycle, some plots, etc., converted with the climate cycle, I told that around 400,000 years, that is around 4 lakhs of years, when we turned as a homo sapiens, we actually stood up on our legs. And then this homo sapiens started to move all over the earth from one place to other place. And then they started hunting and gathering the other things. And this was continuing until 10,000 years ago when the real agriculture started on this planet. And that is the period we call as a Neolithic period. So some people get confused whether the Bhagwan Rishabdev born around 10,000 years ago when this agriculture started. I will say no. If you remember those plots, then around 25,000 years back, the large glacier maximum was there. And before that, that one lakh year cycle of the real climate, that Earth's eccentricity. So Bhagwan Rish, all this, how did I come to know that agriculture was started also almost one lakh 40,000 years before also, and perhaps it might be before. Because the history of the seed, the scientists, biological scientists, plant scientists, and archaeology, they say that the seeds actually of the wheat, valley, and the corn, many other seed, our pulses, etc., they have the history of about a roughly about two to three lakhs of years. It means something kind of a intelligent started and cooking the food started somewhere between one lakh to two lakhs of years. And perhaps, perhaps that might be the time <clears throat> of Bhagwan Rishabdev. And before that, the other 10 bhavs, that is 10, its icons were there starting first from the Mahabal, that is around four lakhs of years. So what I would like to tell you that there is a mixed history. When agriculture started even 10,000 years ago, and the, now everything was available by and large, all kinds of, I mean, uh, vegetables and uh, uh, wheat and uh, oats, rice, everything by and large. But still people were doing hunting and gathering because they were found this is an easier way to take, get the food intake. Now that hole started and it is still not stopped. 
I am really very much surprised when I study this history that partly 20%, 30% food was only of non-veg 10,000 years ago to even up to 5,000 years ago. But slowly, that 20-30% became 70% now and only vegetarian food remained only 30% or so. You all will be surprised to know that alone in one year, 2022, in last year only, more than 400 million tons of meat was produced. This is too much. Very highly significant, big toll. And when people generally ask this question that how it matters, how it matters we eat vegetarian or non-vegetarian. So that only we could learn in last 50 to 100 years only. Because earlier there was not much big mechanism to investigate the impacts of non-vegetarian food on health itself. Rest of the nature, etc. is a different question, but even meat consumption was a some kind of a subject always in a question. And it was not easy to reply to anyone that you please don't eat non-vegetarian food. They will ask 100 questions. So now to, I will just give you some differences in opinions and controversies. That is, the people who support or they give arguments to eat the meat while there are many people, many more, although they eat food, meat, but they will say no. They will give their opinions, their arguments against to eat the meat. I mean, question arises, if there are so many against opinions, then should we stop immediately to meet immediately altogether, I mean, all over the world we should ban or, or there are any benefits of eating meat and that we have to analyze and based on the meat, I mean, benefits, pros and cons, benefits and merits, demerits, loss, health-wise, etc. So we should have the, those kind of things. I'm just giving in the beginning the arguments from those people who are favoring to eat the meat. They say that about the whatever the population is there, our agriculture crop is not sufficient. And so whatever the worldwide, nine, above 90% of the world's population eat the meat regularly. However, there are some of the arguments, they say that, that this meat has a nutrition value. That is, the livestock, farming and the environment outlines, that is the animals, animal farming. The big lands are there in which the animals are kept and they have a grassland where the these cattle, various kind of animals, they eat the grass. So now I please underline my this statement. This livestock farming needs large amount of land from this planet where it is very limited. We have a very limited land now available. Now, if we want to do this thing, then first we have to cut the trees. That is deforestation we have to do. Now, the livestock proteins, they say that the meat is rich in proteins. Number one, proteins. Second, they say that it is amino acids enriched and several essential micronutrients are also there. There is an organization in Europe, works in Europe as well as in USA. Its name itself is EAT, that is food. And they launched a commission, the EAT and Lenson Commission found now that the meat and dairy can constitute 
important parts, of course, important parts of the diet. But, but now please underline, read by this statement also, if you can see the slide. But in significantly smaller proportion than whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and legumes. Legion means phalia jo hoti hai, phalia wali sabjiya, like that. So, that commission itself has reported that yes, it has nutrition values, it has proteins, but it is significantly less than what we eat vegetarian people. So, this was the whatever the argument was there, it was favored, but it was also given against the meat, the some kind of a reports. There was a another kind of uh, arguments which came from the meat society that or the meat industry people that eating the meat is a high culture society. Now see the fun. I don't understand how it is possible or eating the animals. It means you are a high cultured society person. It is not like that. But they say that culture and society, animals are often used as a, I mean, crucial assets in our villages, even in India, Uruguay, in Africa, and many other developing countries, etc. That, and they will be, they will play a vital, I mean, vital part of the whole economy. So they generally, what they do, they are farming these cattle. And then whenever they need money, they are keep on selling for the slot to the slaughterhouse or for the <clears throat> this uh, religious sacrificial, etc. In India, you have seen this kind of uh, business at a very large scale. Then land uses. Now, as I told that for this kind of farming, <clears throat> the ruminants and grazing animals such as sheep, cows, all what they need a large land. So land use, so what they will suggest that actually the animals are using the land which is otherwise a waste land. But whether it is like that or the grass wherever it is there because they need for their grazing, so it is a waste land or it is but when it is used for the grass or by the animals for all that, their cow dung, etc., then the soil degradation, degradation definitely takes place. In fact, it is the soil is of no further use. So, <clears throat> these arguments, I do not recommend and I do not accept also that they are good arguments and those people who eat and sit <clears throat> with those people who are eating the meat. So they will feel that proud that we are also from very high cultured society. Eating meat is not a cultured society. This has been told by many, I mean, high ranking people also all over the world. See, there was a revolution some kind of a revolution in United Kingdom. <clears throat> Perhaps Hansa or those who participants from UK, they can support my statement. That was a revolution against this non-vegetarian or the meats. Meat means non-vegetarian meat or food means I include meat, fish, even dairy products and eggs, everything. Or even the seafoods also that is small creatures, animals, and even eating on the earth ground level, the lizards and the bats, etc. <clears throat> All these things. So there was a revolution and finally turned out that those people who will not take all these things that in UK alone, that they will not take all these kinds of meat, fish, dairy products, eggs, and all other things, and they called because they were not, they did not accept even the dairy, that is milk, etc. So they called 
एडिशनल स्टार इन द वेजिटेरियन एज ए वैगन सिक्स हंड्रेड थाउजेंड इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन Six hundred thousand six lakhs of people they became vegans, and this was a big revolutionary and positive step toward the vegetarianism on this planet. Then there was a against, I mean against the meat. Arguments were given: was the diets high in red and processed meats, high fat from the dairy foods and processed foods, etc. it was basically a very dangerous very dangerous because it has a content in sugar as well as associated with the diabetic uh, kind of uh, proteins even cardiovascular diseases and uh, cancers and this i need not to give even the citations nowadays you can go and search you will get <clears throat> few tens or hundreds of research papers related to biomedical technology and this non vegetarian food and even the differences of opinions between the vegetarian and non vegetarian foods etc then animal welfare <clears throat> societies they also came against this meat <clears throat> industries or meat production and they also told that this farming is not good from all points of view they told this farming is that is animal farming is not good for the environmental point of view or from the sustainability point of view at this point i will describe also so again so there were against this two arguments that sustainability is a big question in the context i will describe but uh, i just tell you that 77% of the agricultural land is lost to the meat production that is for the animal farming etc and out of that how much we got only 17% of global calories that is the consumption of the meat it was available from the animal did you understand my point we have lost land for them 77% and whatever the food is required of that only 17% is available it means again finally 83% we have to arrange from other sources and that is a big issue even today and it is under discussion not among the scientists but in the many uh, societies as well as in united nations also the other is the environmental impacts there are many many kinds of environmental effects uh, of the livestock uh, this thing and production of uh, methods also what kind of mechanism because they use use large amount of water and finally when we see all these things then we many people studied that there is a actually because of this environmental effect there is a climate change and biodiversity loss i will talk about this a little later there are many many kinds of uh, people who eat this non vegetarian food or we can say that uh, they are old people i mean above 35 years or so and they eat this non vegetarian food for their strength that is uh, proteins amino acid etc and the red meat along with the fish egg etc but on the other hand there are 14% people who have some kind of a other and only vegans are 5% uh, sorry vegans are 3% and 5% vegetarian people and then the fish people who eat in between and they consider themselves between non vegetarian and vegetarian kind of people there are people so age when it was determined then it was found that below 35 years still they prefer the vegetarian food but above 35 years of people they prefer uh, this non vegetarian uh, food etc it means being as a gen or being as a society for the ngo worker we should attract the young people somewhere between the 10 years to 25 years and teach them scientifically 
that what are the actually the demerits, what are the <clears throat> no, I mean, merits over there, doubts on non vegetarian. We have to give lessons to them and try to attract towards the vegetarian food. Maybe if we will do this for 10 years, then so we can turn, we can convert this whole earth, all the a significant number of people towards the vegetarian. You can see this strong red color is in North American side. There is slightly purple in the South America, which are the most of these two continents are for the non-vegetarian. There is a different kind of actually colors are representing the different kind of non-vegetarian food is being eaten. I mean, when I say different kinds, means in animal side, maybe beef or the meat from the cows or the sheep, goats, chickens, and somewhere other kinds of things, animals are being eaten. So, but as I told, above 90% people are non-vegetarian people over the globe. So smaller fraction or the larger fraction, they eat the non-vegetarian, that is the meat in one or the other form. In UK, I'm always impressed, as I told earlier, that this vegan society started. Now it is almost everywhere you can find in USA, maybe in a small fraction, but there is a hope that such kind of societies, such kind of cultures, if it evolves largely, uh, then they also may be of help, great help to turn the, this earth toward the vegetarian. If more information is required on this, then you can <clears throat> contact PIPA uh, in UK in London. Okay, now I'm coming to the meat industry and what now they are doing over there. Now this meat industry is actually facing some major sustainability. I gave you two ideas. One is the sustainability idea. The other idea which I told you is about the environmental impact. So if you see, of the 51 million kilometer square of agriculture land, of agriculture land, of that is of the 51 million kilometer square, 77 percent is actually used for this livestock. This is reality as of today. These are the data from the United Nations. And despite this, only I told 17 percent of global caloric, that is consumption, comes from animals. So what to do? <clears throat> it means we have to eat, <clears throat> I mean, we have to uh, enhance the meat industries more and more, or more cattle now, then from where we will uh, get the land? There is no land. Only 33 percent of global protein actually intake comes from this meat and dairy. Rest already that 67% comes from the vegetarian fruits, our crops. <clears throat> so we get actually from that. Now, if they realize that we get <clears throat> larger fraction from the vegetables, crops, agriculture products, then why they cannot, we can not uh, go for 100% we can definitely go for 100% from that and we can stop this meat industries, which otherwise are producing larger and larger pollution on this earth. On the other hand, United Nations says that the population of the whole world will exceed actually the 10 billion by 2050. Currently, we are already in 2023. It means in next 27 years, <clears throat> population density on the earth will be 10 billion, which actually is a cutoff value. Earth never actually accepts more than 10 billion biomass. 
please remember automatically there will be some kind of a crunch will be there or some kind of a chaos will be there and some kind of a small or bigger devastation will be there now if this many however let us consider there will be 10 billions of people so for them how much actually meat will be required can you imagine and for that from where it will come so there will be a food <clears throat> issue food challenge will be there there will be food conflict i should say agriculture conflict will be there and we are already heading toward the cold temperature side so the agriculture itself will be a big issue then from where the meat will come so all these are the big issues and we people should understand these things the other thing major uh, crop yields have been already i mean over the last two decades three decades there are already in problems now over the last 50 years always there is a selective in us particularly in livestock there is a selective food i mean uh, choice has become a kind of a uh, desire but every animal please realize every animal whether it is an insect it is a ant it is a mosquito it is a buffalo it is a cow sheep it has its own biological limits and if we do something more on it by some kind of a uh, transferring its organ hormones etc you might, might many people might have seen in us the chickens have the large breasts and they are not able to walk properly and accommodate in their own dance it means we have done already is some kind of a cruelty by <clears throat> transferring their hormones etc and this will be a big problem similarly people are trying to do with the plants also so this all kinds of what kind i should say since pap jo kar rahe hain whatever this kind of a anomaly which we are creating it is a plant ecology will be in big problem and why it will be in problem because for the animal farming you will require land and you will we will start deforestation for the food for the animals for the grassland and i would like to inform to all of you that animal food is of different kind than our food and when it is prepared in the industry it produces the large greenhouse gases also. so from environmental point of view if i talk then all these issues that is greenhouse gases emission deforestation then farming for the <clears throat> soya and other kinds of things that will not only one issue that sustainability but the environmental issue so what i say <clears throat> that the production of the meat itself is directly or indirectly related to the loss of forests we have already seen in the last my presentation in south america in uh, southeast asia also the large number of uh, i mean uh, this kinds of areas are developed in developing countries like brazil argentina and peru uh, <clears throat> paraguay and many other even in the indonesia also so in south america it is a big problem but it is a big problem in africa and in even in asia what is going with all these things now what i will say that for example rain forests in amazon let us consider that as an example now if you are starting deforestation so means good plants or good number of trees we have cut whether for meat industries or for the soya agriculture or the palm oil or whatsoever but deforestation has caused a clear cut 
reduction in significant reduction in the number of trees and i told you last time that the carbon dioxide basically it is absorbed by the trees if now the trees are not there then who will absorb this carbon dioxide which is emitted largely in significant fraction by the meat industries as well as by the soya agriculture this kind of industry so this will be another serious issue environment i already told you that greenhouse gas emission is another kind of a problem deforestation is another kind of problem so overall a picture if you take and consider this all these things then the, you will find that large number of uh, problems which are again associated with this kind of environmental issue the two problems which i would like to one is the water use and the second is the soil degradation water use for agriculture that is of that kind of agriculture soya palm oil etc and for gold industries or other kinds of uh, oil and natural gas industries etc similarly on the other hand in the meat because they clean the animals and lot of water they are keep on using and they clean the this water is used to clean the meat etc whatever the, during the production process and that water which is used for this kind of uh, things it runs that is run off goes back to the rivers so rivers are also polluted and the livestock wherever it is there they also use the large amount of water now the water itself is in a big has become a big issue and now on the other hand if we are going to devel the water from the underground then there will be a problem of the thermal balance that is thermal pressure balance inside the earth itself that is geomorphological issues are there and that already have started because the pressure temperature and density inside as a function of depth they are also keep on changing i talked last time about this thing now the other thing is the soil degradation which i told now wherever this kinds of animals are there and the grazing land which has been used it becomes slightly not a some kind of a good soil remains actually it becomes slightly with the holes kind of thing holes okay because of the grazing by the cattle and by growing the other kinds of uh, plants as a result what happens the soil agriculture soil scientists have told that fertility of land becomes the barren it goes down the fertility goes down as a function of depth also it has been seen it as a function of the given area it has already been studied so the waterways become now the <clears throat> clogged because the holes are there so it will sip inside it will not give the production very well on the other hand this uh, soil is also a large reservoir you know the reservoir for what if you remember my previous lectures actually whatever the volcanoes they erupt on the earth then whatever the carbon coals charcoals graphites they all deposit on the surface and slowly with the hole it goes down 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 okay so it is some kind of a reservoir for carbon but absorbing it as a plants which are absorbing but co2 which is i mean thrown outside by the animals meat industries other industries now where it will go this is a big issue which is coming up along with the nitrous oxide which is another poisonous gas and the animal i mean waste that is their cow dungs or the dungs of the other animals etc it gives a methane gas production so it, generally if we have only very less number of cows and buffaloes that is some part of the our natural system but if you have if you have 
a live stock at a given area in a restricted area large number of animals are there then the lot of methanes is being produced and that also is a problem so in nutshell i can say about this tug of war some kind of a tug of war between the agriculture and industrial use of the land you see when i was born in 1952 so around 1950 the 63% of the total land on this planet was being used globally for the agriculture and 37% for the industries and for tourism etc <clears throat> while now in just two and half year or two years back the story has reversed currently 74% it is being used for other purposes including the industries meat industries fisheries etc all these things and hardly 26% land is left over for the agriculture and this is the story of 2020 and i told to you that by 2050 united nations has already speculated the enhancement in population by 10 billion if 10 billion people will be there then lot of food will be required but the land is very small now left and by 2050 perhaps this 26% land will remain only 20% or maybe even little less this is a big challenge big issue okay and please remember being a partner of this whole scientific foundation of ahimsa please propagate this message very well <clears throat> to all over the world this is very important that we are losing our agriculture land now <clears throat> generally this farm agriculture that organization and world health organization of united nations that what kind of diet they suggest now and the, that will be the best for the environment best for the health also according to them this is what their suggestion is there and they also suggest however i appreciate simply and sincerely appreciate that they suggest the large fraction of your diet should be vegetarian that is what they say okay and <clears throat> however they also but suggest that in their diet they can include a moderate amount of egg dairy products okay or the dairy pollutant that is egg and fish etc and small amount of red meat that that is they know that it is not good but they don't want to become enemy of the meat industry perhaps that is why they have written this is please underline i know that and on the other hand they will say minimize the use of uh, this <clears throat> uh i mean antibiotic kind of the that foods which generate the antibiotics or the changes the hormones so minimize i will say stop that at all in our food and minimize the use of the plastics packaging the which is dangerous always that is good thing and not minimize actually plastic should be thrown outside of this planet it should be totally stopped <clears throat> we should find some other alternatives made of the wood or the uh, some kind of a cotton thread or something another again that eat forum that agency ngo that they suggest uh, that our diet should <clears throat> shift towards the flexitarian that is in between which i told along with the vegetarian but plus fish something like and i still oppose to them that no there is no need of any kind of non vegetarian item even the insect even a mosquito is not required in your diet because generally i have discussions with them when i am able to survive without any kind of is meat even a microgram then why others cannot survive <clears throat> i am still working at the age of 70 years very well then why others cannot do work so people must think and my 
recommendation always to them as well as to others is to be strictly vegetarian and <clears throat> even if possible then we become vegan i would like to recommend to all of you the two important papers published very recently only uh, in last 5 10 years and they say about this vegetarian <clears throat> food and they suggest the whole process how this vegetarian diet itself can give you proteins amino acids and micronutrients why to depend on the non vegetarian food so all these two papers actually have brought the major revolution uh, on the our scientific community and i recommend you to read this but this is what their recommendation is for vegetarian food on the contrary what united nations and the farm and agriculture organization of united nation what they have reported me this is the data which i am going to present you is from the united nations only and what they say in this and the data is of 2020 2020 two years back <clears throat> that 136 million chickens per day are killed for food please remember what i am saying again 136 million uh, chickens per day are killed for food worldwide 300 million farmed fishes just like animals there is a fishes are also farmed and they are killed per day for food and this total actually do, does not actually include the wild caught and other fishes which people do all over on the earth in different countries separately more than 200 million animals are being killed per day for food so <clears throat> including if i say that a uh, wild animals farmed fishes we get about a total 3 billion animals are killed per day and if you integrate if you integrate or take the summation over a 24 hours into 7 and or that is 365 days you will get 1.2 trillion aquatic animals are killed for food and worldwide every year and 72 billion land animals are killed per year this is big deep numbers we should think and if such kind of biomass is killed animals are killed <clears throat> that is per day or per annum then you can think it means so many number of souls in the context of the jainism so many souls are finished however according to jain philosophy the souls which are finished then that that many number of souls new will be born but suppose that bonds even microbes or nanobs or the mosquitoes etc but then there will be our environment imbalance will be there there will be biodiversity loss will be there and that biodiversity loss actually causes the various kinds of disasters this is the main thing which i want to advocate and want to tell you <clears throat> today on this whatever the research has been done by me and by our students i would like to see there are many kinds of natural disasters earthquakes and volcanoes are not only the earth natural disasters when i say natural disasters i would like to define in three different categories one is the geological <laughs> disasters that is the earthquake volcanoes okay tsunamis which come as a function as a consequence of volcanoes etc they are the geological then the, there are meteorological or climate induced disasters just like hurricanes snow storms landslides etc they are or the wild fires in the forest they all are meteorological and there is third category hydrological actually <clears throat> so prathvi ka aise bhi aata hai vayu ka aise bhi hai vayu ka means it includes the akash and agni and jal <clears throat> जो है जल काय 
उससे भी आता है ऑल दिस आई मीन थ्री डिफरेंट काइंड हाइड्रोलॉजिकल मीन्स द फ्लड्स ड्राउट्स देन इरोजन इन द ओशियंस सम काइंड ऑफ ओवर फ्लोस एंड दिस काइंड ऑफ लाइटनिंग वेन इट कम्स देन टेक्स द रिवर इट सेल्फ फिट्स अवे सो ऑल दिस काइंड ऑफ नेचुरल डिसेस्टर्स आर देर आई हैव शोन दैट द मेजर साइक्लॉन इनसाइड द ओशियन wild fire on the right side top the earthquake at the left side of the bottom and volcanoes on the right side and all these natural disasters what i wish to convey every year thousands to lakhs of people are being killed in this various kinds of natural disaster so natural disasters is always a matter of concern for every country and every country has made a natural disaster management system and the teams over there in this figure i would like to have your kind appreciation i have given that how much economic loss in addition to human loss is there say for example from 1970 to 2020 almost 49 or 50 50 years <clears throat> how much so when i i have shown the red the red line is by the natural disasters <clears throat> green line is by the meteorological that is climate induced natural disasters and the white line is by hydrological that is floods and droughts etc erosion you can see that as a function of time now after 1990 onwards you can see that the geological as well as the meteorological disasters are keep on increasing and not keep on increasing in a, by a factor of 2 or 3 but rather by order order itself that is by 10 times to 100 times they are changing so this big loss is there and that's why it is a natural disasters of different varieties are a center of attraction or matter of concern to each and every country the <clears throat> question always comes from science point of view that why this kind of uh, <clears throat> disasters take place there are many many mechanisms which have been shown by the scientists for different kind of a uh, disasters say for example the earthquakes volcanoes they have told that below the surface of the earth i told you the whole structure if you remember that the crust <clears throat> okay mantle and up to the all the way up to core and how the pressure temperature and density changes etc please check all those ppts back so it is has been proposed that just below the surface about from 5 km to up to 800 km in depth in the crust okay uh, in between that our <clears throat> uh asthenosphere also comes which has liquid kind of a structure if you remember and then the lithosphere is there so in that but basically what i wish to say in that 5 to 800 km crust area there are at a, as a function of depth different tectonic plates are there what do i mean tectonic plates means the plates which are moving from i mean they are uh, split up or individual plates are there of the rocks etc and they are moving inside okay in the solid wherever the solid is there but because it is not a 100% solid and it is the uh, as temperature and then somewhere it is liquid form is also there so they are moving but however they are remain stable because of the in between these plates say given two plates there is some friction force is there barrier is there and that barrier allows them not to move now what happens various kinds of mechanisms have been suggested just one minute please that <clears throat> because these plates have a various kinds of forces which are acting on them so as a result the they move or they get acceleration so there is one mechanism which was given is a 
mental convection currents are there and currents are generally here convection means the heat currents not i mean electric current and because of the temperature changes so temperature gradients which are developed so this convection currents actually i mean deteriorates or degrades this friction forces and accelerate the plates however this mechanism has not got the momentum but there is another momentum that is the ridge push is there that is pushing to each other side or the towards each other side or opposite side etc and that is basically the temperature and density are changing so two quantities are considered third idea is there and that is getting more more momentum and that is the some kind of a slap as we go as a function of down and down the temperature was increasing but as we go i mean come outside the temperature is decreasing now what happens that in the liquid form wherever it is and the whatever the areas which are the old areas they actually become cold slowly as a function jisko hum jainism mein bol sakte hain dravya kshetra kal aur bhav so according to that <coughs> this older <coughs> zones they become cold and when i say cold means its density is higher so it means it sinks down it goes down and down so once it goes down means it will push off the friction barriers which are there it will try to break those frictions or barriers and allow the plates to move faster on the other hand so that's why earthquakes and volcanoes are triggered now there is another idea recently that this how these three processes all these processes take place so it has been given i will come at the end it is known as the eddy currents eddy currents are generated by electromagnetic field and you know that the earth is a good electrical conductor and it has a magnetic it also works as a magnetic bar so it has both electric field as well as magnetic field now <laughs> these three processes which i told to you they can work as a divergent that the plates can move apart from each other so the friction force barrier which is there it automatically drops and then once it is dropped then the divergence will be faster and then earthquake can come or else there is a convergent that they can come opposite to each other and when they come faster the friction force automatically is <clears throat> destroyed and then the earthquake come there is another mechanism that the transform that they can move just sideways you see sideways just like and they come very close but they move sideways and whatever the friction is there that is null and void and then also earthquake and volcanoes appear that this kind of uh, mostly frictions which are there and the whole system is there they are known as normal rivers and uh, strike slip kind of a so these we call them in our science language as a faults so this fault system are there anyway i want just wanted to give you a brief introduction about this it is not much related but now this is the picture which i uh, whatever the mechanism i told that they can come just opposite to each other okay so that is convergence they can go away from each other that is divergence and they can go sideways that is the transformation of that now what we did in the my previous study that only i we considered that how the this climate is change is there what is the evidence so i considered data up to 2020 and uh, i what i did is uh, <clears throat> for 10 years integral sample so this plots are basically a production of the meat in million tons please underline million tons 1 million means 10 to the power 6 and tons so whatever if i say 100 million tons means 100 into 10 to the power 9 kg that much production in different regions of the earth that is say asia europe etc north america south america and so this what you can see i have shown this kind of slide earlier also uh, meat production is continuously increasing 
and this I published the paper also. Uh, it is in press this year, and I I think in this month itself. Uh, this is April, March. It has been being published. It will come to me maybe in a month time. So what I have done, I have integrated the number of earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis, and I showed in that yellow box. So integrated over ten years. So so for example, nineteen sixty one to 1970, in that 10 years left, 40 earthquakes took place, six volcanoes, and four tsunamis take, took place. Similarly, 1971 to 1980, 42 earthquakes were there, five volcanoes and five tsunamis. And when I say earthquakes, means they are the big earthquakes. On the reactor scale, they are more than five, okay, or equal to five, which we generally consider as a devastation kind of earthquakes or the, which kill the people. Volcanoes generally come inside the largely on the oceans and they also produce the tsunamis. Volcanoes comes in the mountains also. You can see the large number of uh, volcanoes in Guatemala, in South America. So well, what I'm describing that as a function of increase in the meat production, uh, over the time, you can just see that between 2000 and 2010, 341 earthquakes, 11 volcanoes, and 34 tsunamis took place. And in the last decade, that is 2011 to 2020, already 421 earthquakes, 29 volcanoes, and 81 tsunamis have taken place. Dear friends, this is what a direct evidence that this gives idea that meat production actually is perhaps a major cause behind the earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. That is all geological, I mean, dis disasters. There may be another kinds of disasters and need to be investigated. What I recently, in just last two weeks, we have done a seriously another work and this work which we have done on the x-axis years again from the 1961 onwards to 2022. Now two years more data, just we got the last week only from the United Nations. So this we took under, we thought that we should have a clear cut example. So on y-axis, on the one side, my left side is a global meat production in the millions of tons. On, on the y-axis on the, my right side is number of, that is number density or number of the natural disasters. When I say natural disasters, means this includes all natural disasters, that is the geological, hydrological, and meteorological. Not only earthquakes or that. So you can see that <clears throat> all the disasters, they are keep on increasing as a function of the meat production is also increased. Here, meat production, I am including everything that is buffaloes, cows, as I told, farmed fish, etc., and all those kind of things. But I have data now for separate, separate kind of production also, and we will undertake that research work in next two to three months to show, understand which kind of entity or vitalities which kind of life, when it is <clears throat> finished or it is killed, then what kind of natural disaster appears? Although it is a big work, it is very difficult to identify that. But even if we will be able to do something in improving our understanding, that will be a great work. However, the big achievement which we got <clears throat> just two days back is the spectrum. Spectrum always, you see, when I showed you the spectrum of uh, this coronavirus, if you remember that number of deaths as a function of the meat production, then it was 100 times larger in those where the meat is being eaten. So similarly, here also I'm happy to show you my recent result of this spectrum that on the x-axis, the global meat production is there, and in the y-axis, the number of uh, the all the <clears throat> natural disasters. And you can see that 
as a function of this meat production, the natural disasters are having the very good high correlation. This is the physics requirement to give the evidence. This is mathematics part. And this, I'm very happy that the correlation is 0 0.94, which otherwise we do not get. And hardly people get 0.5 to 0.7 or something like that. Just one minute. Uh, I'm sorry, there was a call. Uh, so <clears throat> this is the very, very good correlation. And this itself is a very big evidence. We are preparing a paper now for publication based on this. So you can now take my this results also for to present to the people and suggest them. Just one minute. Dipali, my talk is going on. I will talk to you later. Let's see. So, uh, this is the uh, wonderful uh, results you can use also then. So, now, what will be the mechanism? What is the physics behind that? What are the, I mean, biological systems? What is the science systems? or science mechanisms which we can, I mean, put forward to the whole world community that this may be the possible mechanism uh, for the, as a cause for the natural disasters of geological, hydrological, and even in meteorological also. I told you, if you kindly remember that about the airborne <clears throat> lives, our aviation, and we have made as, as a industries. In hydrological systems, we have made our oceans as industries. So we are killing the mosquitoes right from the microbes or nanobs to all the way big animals. Now there will be a question. You can see if you can see my cursor on this, the red line which is going, that is a meat production, but it is almost neck to neck, shoulder to shoulder, but in between, there is here a large number of disasters are there that is between 2000 to 2010. <clears throat> that is large number in 2004, five, that is floods were there, the, many other disasters were there, etc. It means large number of hydrological <clears throat> and meteorological disasters were there. And it means we have done something seriously wrong with the, our atmospheric vayu kai as well as our jal kai ji. So this kind of things. So what I have proposed that there are already proposals about pain waves. So today I do not aim to give you a detailed, I mean, uh, definitions and uh, whole elaborated talk on this uh, <clears throat> pain waves, but only in, I think I am left with the five, 10 minutes. Can I take five, 10 minutes, Maharaj sir? Yes, yeah, you can take uh, five minutes. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> this pain waves, basically the pain which is felt by the, our animals, our lives. So what kinds of, of pains they feel and they will give its response on what frequencies. So the frequencies <clears throat> which are generally referred to say, if we feel pain, then we also cry. So animals also cry means it is a sound. It is acoustic frequency on which we can give. But suppose if I don't have a speech, I, I'm not able to speak any word, then how I will give my response of my pain? It means my body language will be there, right? My mental, my brain waves will be there my emotions will be there. I will have a different kind of a mental state. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, I divide this sound into two parts. One is the acoustic, the sound which we hear, that is hearing range, and the sound which we do not hear. So, hearing range, that is what we speak, is somewhere or animals speak is somewhere between 20 to 20,000 hertz. 
20,000 hertz means 20 kilohertz also you can say. But there are many, many other animals <clears throat> which actually avoid this range and they can have different uh, their hearing range. For example, there are many other different elements, uh, I mean animals, some dolphins are there, elephants are there, they have different kind of uh, uh, frequency range. For example, elephants can hear even the lower than us, that is for 14 to 16 hertz only. Okay, and there are many <clears throat> other animals. There are that is what fishes, whales, fish, etc. They can go down all the way to seven hertz. And there are uh, uh, whales or dolphins which can go even to hundred kilohertz also. That is hundred thousand hertz. Okay, one lakh hertz kind of. Now the division is based on that. That <clears throat> the there is a was a discovery in the last ten to fifteen years about three different important frequencies, and that three frequencies which I will just tell about the one hertz, and that was referred to as a related to the, our heart, and one hertz. You see, we cannot hear. <clears throat> But we have to have some instruments. For example, to hear the heartbeats, we have stethoscope. So like that, there are many infrasonic. So that is the frequencies which are very, very low. Low means less than 20 hertz. They are generally called infrasonic sound or infrasonic waves. And those infrasonic waves go all the way down. Now this, these three new waves in infrasonic range which were discovered, they were very useful. And when I say infrasonic waves, means what I told just now, just little physics. I told you frequency is very small. And if you remember in one of the slide of my earlier lecture, I told that energy source E equal to H nu. H is a Planck constant, nu is a frequency. So if frequency is larger, then energy is larger. But this frequency, you can also write as a C by lambda. C is the velocity of the light, and lambda is the wavelength of this wave. Okay. So now, wavelength is, it means, inversely proportional to energy. If wavelength is larger, it means energy is smaller. If wavelength is smaller, energy is larger. Okay. So these are low energy waves, but they have a long wavelength. And they can go deep into the earth itself also. They can go this past the barrier of the thick walls. They can do go inside the earth. So how much in depth they can go? They can go even to several kilometers. Several kilometers. For example, that's why I have given that if it is one hertz, then it can go to the 340 meters. That is, you can say 0 0.34 kilometer. So if I have a frequency of 0.1 hertz, means it can go to 3.4 kilometer. 0.1 hertz is smaller than 1 hertz by 10 times, means it can go to longer wavelength. And similarly, if you have 0 0.01, then it still can go higher and higher and higher. So if you have 0 0.001, then it can go to 340 kilometers and like. Now the discovery, uh, whatever is made, they found that there are many blood circulation sound waves are there. They are fall in the infrasonic 0.05 to 0.3 hertz. And basically they give with our, whatever has been told in Jainism, our respiratory system that is Shwasan, <clears throat> whatever the breathing we do and whatever the, we kill the nanobs by that. Then the third kind of uh, discovery was there is a 0.1 hertz, still smaller. And these were discovered by two scientists, Trobe and Herring. And they told that these uh, waves are related to our mental state. And they can always, and studying by uh, in these waves, one can study the mental state of a human being or any other animal also, what they are thinking. So you can imagine what I wish to convey that if still lower frequencies, which are also available, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, etc., and they can go, although low power, low energy, as I told, 
but they can propagate all the way. Now it is not a one wave only. When you kill an animal, then you are actually creating millions and billions of such waves. And when you are killing millions of animals of different varieties, then trillions and trillions of waves are moving inside. And they, when they move inside, then they actually deposit the energy inside that whole thing. So what do you have to do? The process of the whole pain wave generation actually takes place in this way. So the pain wave, if I consider that the large number of June, that is whole big, what is, has happened that as a function of time, when such in, I integrate over time, every millisecond or microsecond, all these kinds of the pain waves which have been generated at different frequencies. Now, please remember, of different frequencies. So for a given frequency, if I integrate and then I make as a total amplitude of power, then I can model it that how much deep they can go and what kind of geological they can do. Now you consider not only geological, but it is a four pi space. It is Panjbhut Mahatattva. Everywhere the pain waves will go. So basically because the density in the atmosphere is smaller and so because of the lower density, they can penetrate all the way to in the atmosphere much faster. So climate change is generally much more sensitive to these pain waves. And so uh, this, as I have shown also you that the much more number of meteorological uh, that climate change uh, disasters are taking place. And when you, I mean, kill the big animals, slaughterhouses, et cetera, meat production, then those can go all the way down for the geological. And as I told that it is a four pi space, they can go inside the oceans also because when the fishes are killed, and you can assume similarly when the microbes and nanobs are killed in the atmosphere, then how much pain wave amplitude power is generated in the atmosphere, similarly in the hydrosphere. And in addition to this, I don't want to discuss today itself because pain waves is a separate chapter. And I have my own theory on this, which you will find little bit idea in this today's handbook, which I have sent. But I would like to introduce you the electric field and magnetic field. Electric field E is a force. B is also magnetic force. And when they come along to the 90 degree, that vertical, then the scalar, I mean, field will be generated. And uh, this uh, sine uh, <coughs> theta, uh, so you can always, they, they produce the AD currents and AD currents can penetrate down inside the earth. Even few millimeters are good enough because then the earth itself is an electric conductor. So it will take over and that will go inside. And uh, the faults which are there, which I told as a fraction, of friction forces, they will be uh, diluted or they will be weakened and this uh, eddy currents will give a big voltage over there and accelerate the tectonic plates. Here in this formula is a very simple that the depth to which this eddy currents can go, it is actually inversely proportional to the frequency which have. So if you have a low frequency, you can imagine depth will be much more. Simple rule, okay? I don't want to take you too much physics of, but the another is the permeability and uh, conductivity, et cetera. So all the quantities are inversely proportional to depth. So if those quantities are uh, frequency is smaller, your conductivity is higher, permeability is higher, then the much more depth will be there. So with all these things, what I would like to say that <clears throat> this, uh, uh, Mag whole magnitude of pain waves is basically a combined effect. Or I have to integrate over all this acoustic, infrasonic, and electromagnetic energy, and which finally <coughs> uh, <coughs> deteriorates the whole uh, friction forces in the geological. It deteriorates the atmospheric friction and in hydrological the system inside the oceans, etc., and produces the various kinds of natural disasters. Uh, depending on the types of the animals being slaughtered, etc. Uh, this uh, 
also i told a showed earlier time but you know that on the earth the, as a function of this meat production since last 4000 uh, years plus 4000 years so 4000 years bc and then 4000 uh, sorry 2000 years before bc and 2000 year so in last 4000 years if you take impression as a function of time uh, the data of temperature is from the greenland uh, it is a uncontaminated data a very clean data uh, which is in the blue line and the green line is the fit over that and it shows that there are peaks of the temperature in between but overall impression if you see that the temperature is keep on going down i have shown the period uh, that after this uh, our indus valley civilization when the temperature was very low then again it was increased when the prabhu mahavir actually took the birth the temperature was low and lot of the kinds of the uh, social <clears throat> evil systems were there which he finally came across to that then temperature went up and the roman wars was there and the kaling yuddha was there and then similarly all the again dark age was there then the now modern global warming was there but finally temperature is keep on decreasing what i wish to convey that the few, after the in this whole fifth era the temperature is coming down coming down coming down in between of course of course the temperature peaks are there but on the other hand as i told that united nations is saying that by 2050 the 10 billion people will be there now because temperature is coming down agriculture will be very very low so all the this problems which we are inviting in this 21st century are more than what the betterment of the humanity so we have to fight with ourselves to do the something good for this planet and we our students actually have done some kind of a prediction i don't want to scare to all of you but just because you all are talented community and you can take impression <clears throat> that what i am comparing the number of natural disasters which took place in 20th century and here this prediction for the 21st century as well as the numbers i have given in the red colors on the right table is for the 20 years how many those kind of natural disasters have taken place and how many are predicted say for example in 20th century whole 100 years there were 68 volcanoes were there but in 21st century only in 20 years already 30 volcanoes have taken place and more than 200s are expected the fatalities which will be which were in uh, last century 1 lakh now already 15 lakhs are expected in that, this thing so this all different kinds of uh, uh, natural disasters i have shown including the floods and droughts and pandemics a uh, pandemics i would like to tell in whole 20th century there were total in 100 years 39 pandemics were there but in this 21st century only in 20 years already 70 pandemics uh, were already have we have seen and more than 320 we have still have to see in this remaining number of years so you can imagine you must have heard that the beginning of this century started with the chikungunya the sars and the swine flu etc many kinds of yellow fever and all these things so with all these things what is my conclusion i will say that at no other point of time in the history has agriculture been actually faced with the such kind of a array of uh, <clears throat> familiar and unfamiliar risks i mean natural disasters types of the problems issues all over the world in this and so the growing frequency and <clears throat> intensity of disasters along with the systematic nature of the risks are jeopardizing our entire food system in fact it is jeopardizing our new generation our children i don't know whether our children or our the grandchildren will be able to see this planet as green as it was 100 years before or that so therefore i appeal <clears throat> to all of you to stop this eating uh, i mean propagate the my message stopping eating the meat and to prevent climate disasters and all these other things with this my holding hands again i humbly uh, appreciate your patience to hear me 
and uh, thank you very much uh, for all uh, this effort and kindly propagate the message of non-violence over the globe. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Rajmal Jain, for such a, uh, what we said, uh, oh, we can say alarming lecture. And it is very important to know all these facts and figures before we think about our own dietary habits, and especially the dietary habits of the younger gen uh, generations. They should also learn and know that what is going on because of this meat eating habits. So it is really very, very uh, important to know by all those who are supporting meat industry or taking some kind of non veg So now I would request all the participants uh, if they have any questions with Dr. Rajmal Jain, so they can unmute themselves and can ask the question. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I pressed the wrong switch and then I went out of the system. Uh, but you can ask me questions now. I'm here yeah. back. Yeah, I have a question about uh, when did the meat eating start and when was the Doctor, when was our first tea tanker? Because I think sometimes you, you were lax, sometimes million. I think in future, please don't use lax. Just talk about millions okay. so that it's clear. So when was the vegetarian stop? I mean, when did the meat eating start? And when was Adina uh, tea tanker, the first one? Okay. Uh, my calculations based on the Kal Chakra, and the climate time cycle. The first is uh, <clears throat> Rishabdev, perhaps born. If you want to know in millions now, but uh, one lakh and forty thousand means hundred forty thousand years before. So if you take in millions, means it is zero point one four million. Okay. Okay. Because and when did the meat? I, I understand. That is the time. That is the time. Uh, when this uh, also third era already had started. I mean, the time it was already third in third era. It was third era, that is third eon was about to end. But he born in the third era, Vishabdev. Uh, and now you asked another question, when this people, human, started eating meat. So they started eating meat, in fact, as the history and the archaeological people say with evidences from the teeth, etc., and the bones cut and all those things, they say that about the uh, 2.7 million years or so. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, Professor Jain, my very basic question is that people in America believe that age affected hoti hai meat khane se ya vegetarian food khane se aur dusra question hai wo uh, main shayad theek se nahi samajh pa raha hu jaise uh, tree plants leaves ko khane se kya hinsa nahi hoti aur meat ko khane se kya zyada hinsa hoti hai <laughs> उसका एक क्वेश्चन तो मैं ये समझा हूं अगर मैं बराबर समझा तो आप कह रहे हैं वनस्पति को खाने से ट्रीज प्लांट्स बेसिकली सो बेसिकली व्हाट एवर द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ द ट्रीज व्हेन आई टोल्ड इज द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ द ट्रीज दैट इज फ्रूट्स एंड द अदर वेजिटेबल्स एक्सेट्रा दैट वी आर ईटिंग एंड we are minimizing that violence by eating that. This question was asked in Ethiopia also to me when, because we people eat sometimes cabbage and other things. But yes, we are minimizing that violence. Violence is always there if you take any kind, hit any kind of uh, life, whether it is Vanaswati Kaya or other lives. So it is there. But when you say, when I cut the tree itself, okay? 
that is i think you asked this question am i right yeah. this question when yes, i sir. cut the tree means actually i am doing much more violence in the sense that that i am stopping now its fruits forever from that given tree number one then i am also stopping now its ability of whole paryapti system and its ability to help to the community help to the humanity by absorbing the carbon dioxide so it's i have stopped its features its properties i have finished that but by eating fruits i am only taking a product of that and not completely devastating the tree itself now if i am devastating number of trees like that as a deforestation in a given area then it is a big violence so it is a some kind of a how much magnitude of violence you are doing and in jainism it is a given as a uh, to do minimize this thing and the restriction on that i don't know my answer is satisfactory or not but this is what i told you so magnitude of violence thank you sir appreciate it. and you. you should also understand that when whenever we are taking um or anybody is taking a non veg diet they are not just taking a non veg but they are also taking vegetation no so they are doing double or you can say 10 times more violence in comparison to the vegetarian people to no marat sahab unka marat sahab unka question to yahi tha non vegetarian non vegetarian food to already violence hai hi that is i think he is presuming but even in the vegetarian food also he wants to know whether we are actually uh, doing this uh, violence or not so we are actually taking the products and that is in jain philosophy uh, what is permitted to if you remember ek beech aur bahu beech ka baat kiya tha maine multi seat ka okay प्रतिष्ठित अप्रतिष्ठित एक्सेट्रा आपको याद होगा सब प्रतिष्ठित और प्रतिष्ठित की बात की थी मैंने yes. एक शरीर की जब एक इंद्रिय शरीर एक शरीर की बात प्रत्येक शरीर इफ यू नो प्रत्येक शरीर की जब बात की थी तो आई एक्चुअली इट हैज बिग बायोलॉजिकल साइंस मैं उस दिन क्योंकि मेरी टॉक बहुत लिमिटेड टाइम के लिए होती है और मुझे उसमें थोड़ी सी बात जैनिज्म की कहनी चाहिए इसलिए मैं कहता हूँ बट इट हैज बिगर साइंस then even compared to whatever the modern biologists have even today have i mean uh, understood because that much difference has whatever has been described in gomat sar and uh, purusharth siddhi upai and jeev kand and ma many other i mean uh, our uh, canonical texts uh, so if we go by verse by verse then it it is given in detail of course it is not quantified whatever has been described is qualitatively but it gives i mean definitely the structures and everything so what is permitted to us and what is not permitted to jains i mean to us means jains is also given in that and uh, i remember uh, in one of the lectures acharya shri kanagnand ji told that even if we want something from trees means first we have to request them because they understand the language do you remember i showed one video some 3 4 lectures back a small video which was projected and shown at your end where you give the your good i mean uh, speech of spirituality to the plants unko acche bhav se pyar se boliye pyar se baat kariye aur ek dusra you give hate speech to the plants so it will not grow it will just shrink down so the trees also if we want uh, something from trees then they also provide us and uh, they give with the blessings so the blessings and curse this two are actually uh, languages they are the two languages uh, of in infrasonic waves i should have told this also in my this today's thing pain waves so just like uh, you know that uh, ashirwad jab moves मुंह से स्पीच से नहीं दिया जाता बट ऐसे हाथ से या अंदर आंख से भाव से दिया जाता है और एक हाय होती है बद दुआ दैट इज आल्सो गिवन बाय दिस इंफ्रासोनिक सो इंफ्रासोनिक वेव्स 
play a significant role in uh, karma pandals basically and infrasonic waves are everywhere in pudgal as well as in the life system aapko main kabhi nahi bata paya aur time hi nahi mila hai apne ko itna baat karne ka lekin ek aakash pradesh ke andar itni sari vyavastha hai jain apna jo agam hai usme batai hai so we have to discuss that those things also thank you very much for asking this question i'm sorry i took longer time to okay. address so oh. sir i want to ask one question uh, uh, i have heard about uh, organic meat uh, yes if we uh, if we want to give the solution for this meat problem uh, which is creating environment pollution and all we can uh, switch on to the organic meat have you heard about this i have heard and perhaps uh, next to next talk next mm -hmm. talk is about the energy systems electrical magnetic nuclear etc i think next talk is on that if i remember but next to next talk is on that what you are asking you know generic food generic food so what you are talking is derived in that way so it is made up of some like uh, some type of plastic and it is like uh, same like uh, no it uh, is meat. not made of plastic because plastic is a hydrocarbon and it is not allowed in the body it is plastic okay. packaging only plastic okay. we actually plastic should be thrown out of this earth planet i don't like plastic at all okay, okay. but uh, no, this it, organic yeah. organic meat etc what you are talking means it is enriched in proteins and nutrition values but by and large once it is meat means the inside characteristics internal characteristics are the same as the meat only you understood my point that okay biophysical chemical characteristics mm -hmm. you you might have yes. heard about the this uh, uh, what uh, some eggs eggs which are produced by this generic system and all that and they say yeah, that yeah, organic they, 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 these are the vegetarian yeah, eggs yeah, yeah. but once it is egg that whole yeah, fermentation yeah. process then it is the same and same thing and as as per the our canonical texts on those lines we nobody can eat that also mm -hmm. okay okay what is your name uh, samani shashi pragya aha uh -huh, okay okay so i have one question uh, yes, if, uh, some uh, animals uh, who are being killed and because of their cries uh, the uh, what we have said mental currents which you were, were talking about they are affecting the uh, tectonic plates and they are moving because of those uh, crying and those uh, currents so uh, millions and millions of people are also praying every day so what about their currents which are Uh, no, I I understood. Marasab, I understood your question. Yeah. I I I understood your question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I told is about the three different kinds of waves. One is the sound waves, means hearing, which is between twenty and twenty thousand hertz or like that, which is the acoustic waves. Other which are not cannot be heard. but they are there and they have longer wavelength and they are infrasonic or infrasound waves third is the electromagnetic okay. at the moment i i have spoken today only just as a introduction to pain waves uh, <clears throat> now you see when a animal big animal okay like like a cow uh, the cow of Sh god shri krishna let us say okay uh, this cow is uh, under the process of being slaughter that is in the slaughter house and it is about to be killed so in the beginning when it is beaten and when its skin is scraped and all those process are being done at that time it cries with the very high power okay to the all its i mean strength so that is much much more i am giving one to one example so that cry by a cow is of a louder power than a man who goes in the temple and prays okay and what you do is praying by vocal 
or by infrasonic, it is in the very low power. That is one thing. But whether that man who has uh, doing the prayer is for himself, for his benefit, वो कुछ खुद अपने लिए मांगने गया है और प्रे कर रहा है या उस काउ के लिए प्रे कर रहा है दैट मेक्स अ बिग डिफरेंस एंड दैट इज व्हाट इज मेंटल स्टेट वेदर इट इज फॉर सेल्फ ग्रीड और सेल्फ और फॉर अदर्स आप मेरी बात समझ रहे होंगे मैं क्या कहना चाहता हूं या आई एम गेटिंग दैट पॉइंट नाउ मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल गोइंग एंड प्रेइंग नॉट फॉर अदर्स मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल आर प्रेइंग टू द गॉड irrespective of race religion caste and creed for self that is the part of the greed and desires mere ye car aa jaye mere bete ko ye naukri lag jaye mere ko wahan meri trip ho jaye mera business acha chal jaye ye yahi sab cheeze mangi jati maharaj sahab main maafi chahta hu aap se agar main galat keh raha hu aapko bura nahi lage only the saints monks जो होंगे सभी सभी रिलीजन्स के वो जरूर मतलब जो है वो अच्छे के लिए पूरे पर्यावरण के लिए अर्थ के लिए दे माइट बी प्रेइंग बट एंड नॉट बी फॉर सेल्फ एक्सेट्रा बट अदरवाइज 99.9999 इन फैक्ट नाइन्टी परसेंट पीपल डोंट गो एंड प्रे एट ऑल बिकॉज मोस्टली पीपल नाउ इट इज दे डोंट बिलीव इन गॉड सम पीपल हु बिलीव they go and they ask for themselves so there is a big difference as per karma theory in mm. this two in the pray for others pray for self and now i told scientifically the louder voice is on that cow side and not from my side if i am going to the temple okay mm -hmm. that is the scientific part and now when this cow is in the process of being completely near close to the death then you just see watch eyes brains state its mental state it is giving all baddua or the this thing uh, i i should say cursing that curse waves so that curse actually is infrasonic and that is of greater power because it gives from the whole body and that goes in the four pi space everywhere it 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 has a science achhi tarah se i i am trying to model it out uh, but it i ab to mere paas students ke liye dene ke liye paisa bhi nahi bacha hai i have already exhausted this march was the last uh, month now i don't have any student at all as on today but whatever we could do something uh, we have done and uh, i basically what i wish to convey that if you kill the microbes means you are contributing well of uh, some kind of a disaster of different nature and if you are killing a fish or other aquatic animals means you are doing for other disasters and if you are doing on the earth surface terrestrial and down also means you are doing but how much and how to connect all these things it, it it's a big work big work it is a team is required for that but we can code it out and we can do it at least you wow. could have seen today finally we could get the spectrum and and beautiful spectrum is coming yes so yeah so uh, aridaman jain wants to ask yeah one yeah. one more question uh, sure as usual your talks are very very informative and excellent in every way the question i have is on the slide global economic loss during 1970 to 2019 yes in that slide as far as i can tell the red curve geological has been yes. gone down but you are always showing an increase so what's the uh, is there a conflict no 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 sir <laughs> no conflict what i have separated out in that plot three different natural disasters geological hydrological and meteorological so geological and meteorological are of very high in order okay and uh, recent in re recent time even meteorological have actually gone up that is the floods droughts 
even the landslides and best many many those kinds of things. Okay. But which one is the red curve? Red curve is geological. But isn't that going down? Ge no, ge geologically is uh, going up. Uh, that is the earthquake and volcanoes and tsunamis. No, but your curve, you look at your red curve, it's going down from what it was previous. No. Look at the end of the red curve. No, no, it means uh, it is. it has gone in a decade in this, but it does, just a minute, huh? just a minute. Yeah, because uh, your, your curve, red curve is going down. Yes, I, I have slide. You please give me just two minutes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Sir, you see that? Can you hear me? Yes, that of course. First red curve in the 19, I mean, uh, just a minute, uh, which I should. First. First spike, big spike of red curve was something like that in 1995 around. Then the second came around 2010 or something. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, and after that it's going down. No, it, it is, that curve goes down means that is the number of events which I have shown in the y-axis is going down and then again it increases. Uh, 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 and then this green, which is the meteorological, it has come up and then go down and then again up and again up. So currently in 2020 time, that is 2015 to current time, meteorological, meteorological events, they were higher uh, than the geological. It does not mean, that is what I wish to say, that geological also will come up and they have some kind of a periodicity. Sir, one thing, uh, if, if you know little, I, I, because you have asked a very good question, I would like to tell, waves, whenever they travel, waves have a periodicity, okay? This is a nature characteristics of the waves. So the, we generally analyze, analyze the waves of any kind by two things, their power and their periods. Say, for example, the sun itself is vibrating. Sun itself is vibrating, we call it a helioseismological uh, so oscillations. So the waves actually is moving, and that is five minutes oscillations it is revealing. So the peak goes one time up, then it comes down, goes up. So here, disasters, the whole system, the energy is released. That is a disaster. Energy is released, is disaster. So it comes in a very high, then it will go down, and then again it will catch the momentum. So what, when you take, consider at any given time, all these disasters, then you will find, oh, our whole climate is, our biodiversity is in question, biodiversity is lost, or climate is changing, etc. Just by one event, you cannot say the climate is changing. It should reveal a large number of uh, such disasters as a function of time on the wave. Thank this you. Is a wave analysis system. Sir, I don't know if you physics the engineering side. Then you can, or you, you can just go to the internet and you can see uh, the wave phenomena. Then you will okay. see the power and this. Uh, and what, should, what should we do in a meantime, in a little form, to change certain things which we can do? What no, should we, we, should, we, we, we should do two things. Yeah. We should think first ourselves to become a vegetarian, okay? Yeah. I mean, the, follow the complete principle of non-violence in all the 10 forces context in context to 10 forces yeah. and as well as to do for others yes to educate others to communicate others prayer if we are doing even it should be for others not for ourselves in uk i see quite a positive side of the vegetarian vegan people oh, are yes. very yeah, yeah. very yeah. educated there, there there was a big revolution in uk only the vegan veganism came from UK only. Yeah, we are saying 
I have lots of friends in UK, lots of friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only stopped visiting UK, USA only because of Corona since last three, four years, I'm not moving outside. But otherwise, my many friends, even they are much better vegetarian than me, honestly speaking. Okay, yeah, he, better. He, I in can't UK, see in UK. Yeah, I can't see here any negative. I was very positive up till now. Today, I feel like I, I don't know how things can be run more towards vegetarian. Because wherever I go, 90% people are vegetarian. 90%. I, I hardly seen coming across like... In, in a localized, but in a localized town or area. Yeah. When you see even if a whole, whole UK... Oh, yeah. UK, yes, you will not find. Okay. No, I, I would must say that, but still, they're very respectively taking vegetarian. That, that, that is, yes, yes, I agree, and that is what I have very good respect to UK. Yeah, I, I, I always, I always quote, I always quote examples of the UK. Very positively. In fact, so many things I don't know, they know. That's how I came across certain things, and. I'm very, but still I can, I don't know how to do it a little bit more to, I don't know, guide me something which I can say towards certain so, things. Only Maharaj Sahib to batayenge, but I, I, I always do the, one is ourselves first, what we have to do on our own physical body. Yes. Of follow up the non-violence to all the 10 forces. Yes. One vachan kai plus paanch indris. Okay. And uh, as a function of longevity, and uh, this respiratory system. So 10 forces. That is, we have to apply the non-violence for ourselves and pray for others that, or work for others, social works, uh, work for others. You see, uh, I don't want to quote, but because you have asked questions, I generally do work for this uh, Anganbadi children in India. You might have heard the kids between the age of the three years to five years. Okay? Well, I don't mind make myself contribute if I can from here to do something and involve to, I don't so, mind. And they are the children. And the, always uh, my mother was taught me that the blessings from the children and how the blessings, they become happy. They laugh. Oh, I got this thing, this thing from him. That itself is a big blessing. And the blessings from the kids is always much, much of higher amplitude than any other one. So uh, anyway, we thank you very much. I for think this. we have taken so much time of Professor Admiral Ji Jain. Uh, yeah. Here, but uh, Suresh Kumar has some questions. So this would be the last question. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Professor, sir. Uh, as usual, your talk is uh, very nicely. Uh, the main uh, question is, the as per karma point of view, the uh, industrial owner, meat uh, manufacturer, or meat owner, or who is uh, eating the uh, marketing people, those are involved, and who is uh, non-vegetarians, as per karma point of view, they have to suffer, right? But how, in other way, uh, earth is affected and disaster is, is coming up. You are connected with disaster. But karma yeah. is directly involved, who is done karma, uh, who has done the mistake, they have to bear the fruit. So people and the industrial owner, uh, everybody to bear the fruit. But ultimately, earth is affected and earth is uh, take to retrieve themselves and it is naturally is getting affected. Uh, sir, I, instead, I, of, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of the people. Another yeah. one thing, another one thing, human being having mind. The fish, chicken, these are all not having mind. But human beings also killed and also uh, doing uh, accident and uh, medicine. Lot of uh, human beings also killed. That uh, vibrations also to be considered or not? Because human, uh, my as you were, uh, I, 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 I think uh, uh, I, I understood your question. If I yeah. can summarize your question. Uh, you want to ask between the individual versus global, okay? Yes, yes, yes. So yes global, yes. when I say, means the earth system and natural, all disasters, etc. 
so currently we have seen this all different kinds of uh, i mean <clears throat> violent efforts which are being done by humanity as well as by all animals or by all lives how it affects the our planet that is what at the moment i have done uh, research with. and we are even have not yet fully uh, done that which kind of violence will do which kind of uh, disaster still it is to be endorsed now as for the karma karma one karma one is by all individual basically sureshji every individual has karma but the which i have told just now also the amplitude power in decibels okay from the waves that power how much you are depositing in your karmic through karmic body on your soul and that is done through the tejas tejas you must have heard aapne to padha hi hoga tejas tejas varg so soul actually is encased it is soul is encased uh, by the tejas and karma particles so maybe on 20 with the last my talk uh, i i will because that time going to tell as an additional talk or the last talk uh, that will be on the process of karma band uh, how actually and how the salvation takes place the at moksh praptim jo bolte hain how it does and all these kinds of uh, individual karmas how karma band and uh, effects are there we will discuss on that day on okay. perhaps 20th of may uh, okay. because if i will start to tell you it will take another half an hour or so in detail yes. and uh, but and yes, compared your to your question is to... your question is very valid and valuable because you asked between the individual that is local versus uh, global uh, how the things happen okay and, uh, and one more thing sir fish and uh, other animals are uh, having with the mind without mind if you compare human while human to human violence is more than the fish non vegetarian sir, violence sir, I, it, I is a, it, it, it is known it is known that the those who have talent those who have talent they do more violence relative hmm. to those who do not have talent at all so talent actually what you want to say mind etc brain system but that the mental state actually bhav jo bolte hain so it is we are keep on changing as a function of time fish or elephant bhi le lijiye they are not changing their mindset so, and, uh, recently you as your as your in the lecture you said new yeah. I, uh, ultrasonic wave found it in the heartbeat and respiratory uh, devices similarly mind uh, it's much 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 uh, better uh, sound waves passing so human and, being uh, human being are much more cruel people cruel animal okay yeah. and because they don't eat directly by the say sword or uh, by the bullet or something like that they kill even or they do violence by the brain mind also creating so many problems and all that you can see that whatever the problems on the earth between the among the countries between the countries global scale uh, on the local scale all are created by human beings not by other animals yes for yes, example ho horse does not need actually any cloth i tell you cloth horse does not need any cloth even elephant does not need any cloth he is very well suitable on this planet with the environment am i right yes yes yes, yes. but but we discovered now the many different kinds of clothes and clothes of different luxuriousness and that became envy jealousy okay and culture part and then the all the race started and then fighting started and the whole socio economic structure disturbed you tell me any horse has disturbed any socio economic structure no they also have the right to live on this earth animal right you might have heard about that animal right we are not supposed to kill them actually yes sir we are not supposed to kill even a microbes but 
for our own luxurious lifestyle our living standards our greeds our money requirement etc we are doing yes. all this violence yeah uh, even uh, recently i went to one seminar uh, yes i uh, accept jain seminar all the universities uh, serving food at the end of the food they are serving started serving non veg food even in the yes, school serving, children they yes, are serving, serving non vegetarian food. food yeah in the seminar in the university itself ah yes yes so as you said i agree you have to you have to talk with the university and the school itself in the school yes. mid meals they are serving eggs the students are getting practice to, to eat uh, eggs from the age so slowly they get growing they get into english uh if you remember in my today's talk i request to, to all of you to i mean uh, talk to be in communication with the young people say between 10 to 25 years okay yes, those who are in the schools and colleges and if we can teach them about this vegetarian food i think we will be able to make a big difference on the earth yes sir sir in fact i, I school, also believe school management people university people because of their decoration or their uh, i mean mental fitness that they will become great if they will not they by serving the non vegetarian uh, food etc so this is all i mean uh, many uh, unsocial uh, agendas are there in the events so we have to be so very instead, of, instead of egg they can give fruit or any vegetable fruit or any no, they can i mean we in pune here we, we are serving always the very good quality vegetarian food yes sir vegetarian is much more than uh, i mean non vegetarian much more decent and much more uh, tasty and uh, good food and healthy in some yeah, yeah. Mr. Healthy. i want to say one thing that uh, yesterday we had a mahavir jayanti uh, lecture series at fiu and uh, since uh, this uh, lecture series is being sponsored by jain community or jain education research foundation and the uh, what we say dinner is given uh, that was vegan and i saw that all the foreign uh, scholars or students so who come in that program they like very much the vegan and vegetarian diet until and unless it is available at on university campus they cannot yes. think of that what is well, vegetarian food and how it is cooked and what we have to eat and what we should not so vegetarian cafeteria are required at, on each and every university campus at least uh, wherever there is some jain studies program if there is some such, such kind of cafeteria is available automatically all the students and faculty will convert gradually into vegetarianism and veganism we need not to say that what is harmful uh, uh, what is harmful in uh, non veg diet we need not to say it to them because they already know about it but they have no option they since they are culturally so uh, what we say ingrained in such kind of habits and they are not aware of the vegetarian diets and their cooking systems so it is uh, the duty of those people who want to promote veganism or vegetarianism they have to think of our of uh, this kind of cafeteria on each and every school system and also the university system then only it can be easily implemented into action yes recently when i was uh, I, i had gone to deliver a lecture on mahavir jayanti last week okay on the 2nd uh, april almost more than 500 people were there but all the dishes were pure jain dishes i should say not only vegetarian but the jain dishes including the good quality of sweets also so we i mean why we cannot uh, do same thing everywhere it is only what the this meat service or non vegetarian food service has become some kind of a cultural decoration no of the and they they want to become of the high society or something and it is 